Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be seeing how we can integrate Redis, SQL Server and our web API inside our Docker Compose file. We're going to be seeing how everything can run directly from Docker Compose and how we can manage everything. We're going to be adding Redis to our application and we're going to be seeing how we can utilize Docker Compose to manage all of this together. So let's get started. What I have here is I have my normal web API that we have gone through over so many videos ago. If you want to get started with it, I'll share the link somewhere here on the description down below but basically as we can see here from this it's a very simple web api we have an api we have a data service class and we have entities and this web api currently relies on a sql server database so if i open here my docker compose file we can see we have a very simple sql server database and within the sql server database my web api is connected to it so if i open my program.cs we can see i'm using sql server and i'm directly loading my connection string from the app settings so it's a pretty straightforward application as well what i have here is i have my docker file which helps me containerize and create an image for my web api and what i'm gonna do right now first of all is i'm gonna add a package to my web api in order for me to utilize caching which is going to be redis cache and once i do that i'm gonna utilize my docker compose file to add redis to it so let's see how we can do this so inside my terminal if i go to my formula one web api which is gonna be dot net add package microsoft dot asp net core dot output caching dot stack exchange redis and now that has been installed successfully we can verify this by actually going directly to our cs approach and we'll be able to see it there and as we can see it here it has been installed successfully okay great so now once we have done that i'm gonna go to my program.cs and i'm gonna be adding my output caching mechanisms inside my application so i can utilize it so first things first we're gonna adding the output caching here i'm gonna use builder dot services dot add output cache I'm going to specify the options and then the first one I'm going to utilize and I'm going to be defining the default output cache. So I'm going to put options dot add base policy and this base policy is going to contain the default expiration time. So I'm going to put add expires and then here I'm going to specify my timestamp. So timestamp from seconds and I'm going to make it 60 seconds as the default policy and I'm going to create another policy as well, which is going to be options dot add policy and this policy i'm gonna call it my custom policy my custom that should be fine and then i'm gonna specify here my configuration for it and i'm gonna say it expires within 30 seconds for example so time stamp time span dot from seconds and i'm gonna make it third so pretty straightforward all i'm doing here is i'm specifying output caching for my apis and basically i'm defining the default one 60 second and my custom one for 30 seconds i can do whatever i want this is just simplistic here the next thing that i want to do is now I want to actually have some kind of a Redis implementation inside my API and Redis instance running. So first of all, I want to add Redis to my projects in order for it to actually run. And I'm going to add it through Docker Compose. So after my database, I'm going to start adding Redis here. I'm going to call this formula.cache. And I'm going to specify the image that I want. And it's going to be Redis latest. Then I'm going to specify the restart configurations. So it will be always and then I'm going to specify the ports that I'm going to be utilizing and the default Redis port is going to be 6379 and I'm going to make it as well 6379 okay perfect so now that i have these running here and this is this is going to be my main redis instance that's going to be running i'm going to be utilizing this in order for my application to connect to it so if i go to my app setting inside my web api inside my connection strings i'm just going to add a new one and i'm going to call it redis cache and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to specify my instance name which is going to be formula one cache this is going to be the main instance that my application will connect to and i'm going to specify the port and this port is going to be the same one which is going to be 63 and now basically what I have done here is I was able to link my application to the instance of Redis which is currently working inside my application great so now that I have done this and now everything is running what I want to do right now is inside my program.cs I want to actually first of all get this Redis cache so I'm gonna put for Redis connection string and I'm gonna put builder dot configuration dot get connection string and I'm gonna specify the Redis connection string and if we take a look here it's called Redis cache so I'm gonna copy this put it here and once I have done that now what I want to do is I want to actually inject the Redis service inside my application and the way to do that it's gonna be builder dot services dot add 
stack exchange redis output cache and then i'm going to specify the options and the options dot configuration i'm going to say it's going to equal to the redis connection string that i have great so with this what i was able to do is i was able to connect my application to redis utilizing the connection string and i specified here the output cache so now that i have defined the middlewares that i want now I actually want to use them so inside my program.cs and after the builder.build what i want to do here is i want to add the following which is a dot use output caching great so now my application is going to be heavily relying on utilizing caching in order for it to work great what i want to do right now is i want to add a functionality to my application so whenever it runs it will check if the database exists or not and if it does not exist it will actually do the migration for it so let's see how we can do this inside the root directory of my application i'm going to add a directory or a folder i'm going to call it services and inside the services i'm going to create a new class and this class i'm going to call it database migration service Great. And once I have done this, I'm going to create a static functionality here, which is going to be public static void. I'm going to call it database migration initialization. And it's going to take an I application builder. I'm going to call it app. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a context. So I'm going to put using var service scope equal a dot application services dot create scope and then here what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to using the scope in order for me to do the migration so i'm going to put service scope dot service provider dot get services and here is going to be my application db context which is going to be app db context and then i'm going to say dot database dot migrate perfect so what will this do is every time it runs it will check if there's any migration that needs to be added to the database if it does it will decrement them if not it will ignore them so now what i want to do is inside my program.cs and after the builder dot build I want to add this and right now because it's in development I can add it here and what I want to do is I'm going to put database migration service dot migration in database initialization and I'm going to inject the app that I have okay great so now my application has now output cache enabled now I have my database management what I want to do is now I want to add my application to the docker compose file so I can run everything through it because right now I can see I have my SQL server I have my caching but I don't have my application so now let's add my application and the way to do it we're gonna put formula.api because that's my formula application i'm gonna specify the image which is gonna be formula api app then i'm gonna specify my build and this build will take the context it's gonna be the default context and my docker file which is gonna be docker file then i'm gonna specify the ports which is gonna be running on port 8080 so let's add them here and the last item of configuration which is gonna be environment variables so i'm gonna put environment and the first one is gonna be asp not core underscore environment equal development and ASP not core underscore HTTP underscore ports I'm gonna make it equal to 88 great so now what I have done here is basically I have wired up my application from my SQL server to my cache to my formula one web API and within this I was able to have everything up and running so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna open my terminal I'm gonna clear it up and I'm gonna run my docker compose file so I'm gonna put docker dash compose up with build and this will make sure everything is building this will take a few minutes to build so once this is complete we'll be able to see it now running a few moments later so now we can see everything is being initialized let's make this a bit bigger if we take a look here we can see that my caching is up and running my sql server is up and running and we can see that my migration scripts there's a problem with it so let's see what's the problem and i think i know uh, it's a connection thing we did not update it so let me stop this what we want to do is we want to make sure that i'm referring to the ms sql server in the connection string rather than local host that i currently have here so i'm going to update this because basically everything will run inside the internal docker network so they need to match local host will not match so i'm gonna clear this up so let's run it again docker dash compose up dash dash build we can see it's building now and cache is running sql server is running our application started to run and we can see the migration has been implemented successfully so now if i open my my application on a web browser so let's try to do it right now and we go to localhost 8080 and we can see my application is running and if i open my cache management right now we can see it's empty what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do some gets we should be empty i'm gonna add some drivers now try it out i'm gonna put muhammad last name now and I'm gonna put driver number let's say 23 create 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 so now we can see that I have added a few drivers if I click on execute we're still getting the the empty one because it's being cached if I click here we can see that this information is being cached if we wait 30 seconds uh, 60 seconds we should be able to get it so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna shorten this up to 10 seconds 
So I'm gonna go back to Rider and inside my program.cs, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, uh, shorten my custom implementation from 30 to 10, and I'm gonna attach my custom policy to the get endpoint inside my controller. So inside my drivers controllers, where I do get all drivers, I'm gonna add a custom policy. So I'm gonna put output, output cache, and then I'm gonna specify the policy name, and then the policy name is my, my custom policy. I'm gonna stop this and run this again. It will build up my application with the new custom policy in place. And now we can see everything is running again. We still have to wait for my web API to boot up, and we can see it's already started to run. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my web browser, click on execute. We can see I got the users have I created before and now if I go back to my Redis cache and if I refresh this we can see here that all of this information has been loaded in the cache so let's see it again and I click on execute we'll be able to see it here we can see on the left hand side all of the driver information that I have and all of this different data so now if I click on creating more drivers within the next 10 seconds they will expire the data in the cache and I can get the fresh new one. So now if I click on execute, click here and then execute, execute and we'll be able to see that they're refreshing this the data has been updated to the latest version because it only lasts 10 seconds and it gets deleted and now we can see it's all available here for me to utilize inside the cache. Okay, great. In this video, we're able to see how we can actually utilize Docker Compose to manage our database, to manage our cache and our application, how we can connect everything together and make it work. We're able to see how the different configuration are being set out and mapped out inside our web API. So we'll be able to connect to the instances of caching as well as our database inside Docker. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.